I want to ask you a question this morning. And I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand. But I've been that person. I've been that person more than once. How many of you are nervous sitting in church this morning? I am. I'm nervous being in church. Because you know why? So many times I sit in church I was nervous is because I was lost. And I didn't know where I was going. Now I'm nervous because I don't want to let God down. When I was a kid, I always thought that, that my mom and dad, everything that they told me I did was wrong, Madison. It was always no. And I was always thinking, why is everything that I do not right? You can't do this. You can't do that. And I thought about these things. And I thought about why do they not want me to do these things? And the reason they didn't want me to do them is because things could harm me. Could have got hurt. Could have died. Things could have killed me. And I got older and I did things that I didn't tell them about. And I did more things that I didn't tell them about. I did more things. And when I went to church with my mom, the reason I didn't want to be saved, the reason that I didn't want Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life, is because he required something I wasn't willing to give up. I wasn't willing to give up what I wanted. I wanted to hold on to what I wanted. I wasn't willing to give that up. I thought coming to church, I thought God's sitting up in heaven and he's got a big hammer and he's just waiting to use it. He's waiting to hit me across the head with it. Because he doesn't, because how could God love me when he asks so many things of me? He requires too much. I can't serve a God that asks all these things. He requires too much of me. But you learn as you get older, you learn the respect for your parents, don't you? When you were young, you thought they were dumb. But as you get older and you have kids, you learn to have respect for your parents because you know the things that they did were to protect you. You learn that. So, you also learn that God loves you. And you learn that God's there to protect you. See, that's the biggest lie that Satan will use in everybody's life. Is that God's sitting up there waiting to just smash my dreams. And waiting up there to just smash my career. And smash everything that I want to do. Let me tell you what. When you come to Jesus Christ, you don't have to give up everything that you're about. Okay? That's where everybody's wrong. You don't have to give up everything you're about. You just got to change who you are. He wants you to change who you are. You can still do things, but now you do them in a different light. You don't do them in the darkness. You do them in the light of Christ. Christ has something for you that he wants to share with you. Let me tell you what. Jesus could have just said, you know what, I ain't going to that cross. These people ain't worth it, I ain't going. He could have said that. But he didn't, did he? He thought about you and he thought about me. He thought about all the things that we were going to do in life. He thought about all the trouble we were going to cause in life. He thought about everything that we were going to do. And he said, you know what? I love them. Just like your parents, regardless of what you did wrong, your parents never stopped loving you. They never gave up on you. They always love you because you're their child. You know what we are to Jesus? Children. We're his children. So if we want to be loved by God and we want to be his children, then we have to do a few things that we have to change. We have to change some things in our life. We have to change the way we talk. We have to change the way that we live. We have to change things. Well, now you're, now, you know, you was doing good, preacher, until you got to that. Now my ear, I'm turning my hearing aids off. See, we don't want to hear the truth because the truth requires something of us. I didn't want to hear the truth because the truth required something of me. I'm not worthy. I'm the last person on earth, Brad, that's worthy to stand up here. I don't deserve to stand up and talk to y'all because I'm a sinner. I'm, I was a sinner that needed a Savior. I'm saved by grace through faith because Jesus gave me that opportunity to come to him. But I'm just scum of the earth. I ain't nothing. I don't have the, but no uh, reason to stand up here and talk to you. But God said, I choose you. I said, why? You could have found somebody better than me, I guarantee it. 
Because I ain't here for me. I'm here for you. I'm here for people that need Jesus Christ because I was that person sitting in that chair. I was that person sitting in that chair squirming. I was that person in that chair rolling my eyes when the preacher was talking. I was that person in that chair that when the altar call, call was given, I was like, is he ever going to be quiet? That's why I don't give a 45-minute altar call. But praise God, he got through to me. He got through to me because I seen something happen one day in my life. I seen something happen in my earthly father's life. I saw something that just completely changed my way of thinking about Jesus Christ. I saw the cross in a different way. I didn't see the Christ, uh, the Jesus, the Christ hanging on the cross and the blood running off of it. I saw the tomb open and I saw the Savior walk out. When I walked in the church, I saw Jesus is not hanging on the cross. He is risen. I seen that spiritually. I seen that in my heart. I seen it that it was different. I seen that things were different. And that day, that night that I saw, it was at a revival that I saw my daddy's life change. That's the night that my life changed. That's the the night that I went to the altar and I meant it for a change. Been to the altar five, six, seven, eight times. Never made a commitment. It wasn't real. I just did it so the preacher would quit giving an altar call. I'm being honest. Seriously. I got tired of a 45-minute altar call. I was hungry. So I went to the altar. Shame on me. Yeah, you can say it because it was terrible for me to do that. But I did that many a times. I went up there and I wanted to lay down everything at the foot of the cross. I wanted to lay it down, but I couldn't lay it down. Because I wanted it so bad that I couldn't let go. Have you ever wanted something in life so bad that you just couldn't turn loose of it? I wanted the life that I lived. I wanted alcohol. I wanted all of these things that that made me happy. Sitting there listening to a preacher for 45 minutes, that didn't do me no good. What good did that do me? That didn't make me happy, Matt. That didn't do nothing for me. All that did was make me an angry and bitter person sitting there and listening to somebody preach at me. Well, let me tell you something here today. I ain't here to preach at you. I'm here that I can say that I've been where you are. I'm here today to say that I know how you feel. I know how your hearts are. I know how you feel because I've been there. But once I got to the point of understanding that I needed Jesus as my Savior, I got to the point, Darren, that I couldn't go no more. I was lost. And I knew that I was lost. Before, I didn't know I was lost. I always thought that this was just a big old party, big old show, you know, going to church. You know, they're all going to hell just like me. Why do I need to go to church? Why do I need to be in God's house? Isn't God's house my body? Isn't the temp- my body the temple of the Lord, Tommy? Isn't that what the scripture says? That our body's the temple of the Lord, so why do I need to be in a church house listening to somebody talk for 30 minutes? I didn't need that. I didn't want that. I didn't desire that. And then God calls me to be a preacher. It's like, God, are you sure you got this right? You ever question God? Or am I the only one? I said, God, you got the wrong person. I don't need to be here. You don't know the things that I've done. Who on earth is the created to talk to the creator and tell him he don't know? Huh? He knows our every thought. He knows everything that enters the mind of man, the heart of man. He knows it all. So I said, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You know what? Fine. I surrender. I surrender. If this is what you want, I surrender. What do you want me to do? My pastor told me prior to this, I was in minister school. I was lost. I wasn't saved. I was taking ministry classes. I was doing it because I felt obligated to my wife, felt obligated to my mom and dad. I wasn't doing it because I wanted to. I did it because, okay, if this is what you want me to do, I'll do it, but I did it begrudgingly. I was kind of like Jonah. I was kind of like Jonah. It's like, fine, I'll go to Nineveh, but I ain't going to like it. So here I'm sitting, sitting in these classes week after week. And I'm learning things that I've been in church my whole life and never learned. 
And all the while, this is how awesome God is. All the while, Jesus is taking a little bit. He's taking a little bit. He's taking a little bit. He's taking a little bit of the world out of me. A little at a time. A little at a time. A little at a time. Am I perfect today? No. Absolutely not. And I never will be until I reach the kingdom of heaven. Are you perfect today? No. But you will be when you reach the kingdom of heaven. See, that's the thing that I always told God when he called me to preach. I said, I will never come to church and preach at people. Because that's not what I believe in. What I believe in is the, is the Holy Scriptures of God. I believe in that Bible and what it says. Now, if you don't like what the Bible says, take it up with God. Because I'm not going to change the word. Okay? I'm going to say what it says. Whether it steps on my toes or your toes. Because it's going to step on all of our toes at one time or another. Because it's truth. And see, the world is right now is, is in disarray and it doesn't want truth. But that's what Jesus is, folks, is he is truth. That's why people don't want him. Because they want to do their own thing. Let me tell you, doing my own thing caused me some near-death experiences. It caused me several times of meeting Christ on bad terms, not being saved. Praise be to God that Jesus Christ didn't return. On, in 1999, because I would have missed him. I'd have never made it home. I'd have, I'd have spent the eternity separated from God, also known as hell. People don't want to hear that. But I'd have spent eternity in hell if he'd have come in 1999. But he didn't. This morning when I woke up, I was praying, and I was, I was seeking, seeking the Holy Spirit and asking the Holy Spirit what he had for today. And I said, Lord, it'd be amazing. It would truly be amazing if you came back today, Resurrection Sunday. It would be wonderful if you came back. You know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said, what about your family that don't know me? What about the people that are lost in this world that don't know me? It's not time yet. It's not time yet because there's people that need to find Christ. There's people in here today that need Jesus Christ, just like I needed him. So we wait. What do we do while we wait? We pray and we seek God. And we search our hearts. And we ask God, what is it that you want from me? There's nothing wrong with asking him that. Ask him what he wants from you. But here's the problem is when we ask him what he wants. Is he'll tell you. That's the problem. Because he'll tell you what he wants because then we're like, well, wait a minute, God, I don't want to do that. He has something special for us, folks. He has something to offer us. And that was his life. He has something to give us. He has something to give you. And that's life. This life is short. We think it's long. It lasts. Sometimes for some of us it lasts longer than we want it to. For some of us it doesn't last long enough. There's some of you in here that's been through some stuff. I'll, I'll put it this way. Most of you in here, at one time or another in your life, has been through some stuff. You've been through some hard times. And let me tell you what. When things go south, I don't care if you're saved or not, you're going to cry out to God. You're going to pray. You're going to seek God because you need help. Why is it we wait until we fall into the trials of life? Before we cry out to God. Why do we wait that long? Stubborn. Hard headed. Don't want to surrender. We think we know what's best. That's one of the biggest lies Satan uses. I think I know, I think I know what's best for my life. Let me tell you. I didn't know what was best for my life. But God did. God knows what's best for your life. And he knows what direction he can lead us. I want to ask you two questions this morning. Easter, what does it mean and why does it matter? What does Easter truly mean? What does it mean and why does it matter? A lot of people believe in the resurrection. Did you know that there was a poll taken by this man named George Gallup? He did a poll. And 84% of people who never go to church 
believe that Jesus rose from the dead. They believe in the resurrection. It's a historical fact, the resurrection is. Okay? It wasn't done in secret. The whole city of Jerusalem, the whole Roman Empire knew about it. There's at least 15 historical references of Jesus meeting people, touching people, and talking with people after he had been resurrected. One time he cooked breakfast for the disciples in John chapter 21. I didn't, re I didn't realize that until I looked it up. One time he cooked his disciples breakfast after his resurrection. He cooked them breakfast on the, on the, on the seashore. One time he talked to about 500 people after he had risen from the dead in 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. A lot of people saw him. A lot of people saw him. So what does the resurrection mean? Three things. Three things. Jesus is who he claimed he is. He has the power he claimed to have. And he did what he promised to do. That's the three things about the, what the resurrection means. So number one, the resurrection means Jesus is who he claimed to be. How do we know that? John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. He was telling Mary and Martha, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He said, who who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. What does that mean? That means that I may face an earthly death. And you know what? Praise God. If we see the rapture, we won't face an earthly death. We'll be caught up. But in, if the rapture doesn't take place in our lifetime, we will face an earthly death. Every one of us, 10 out of 10 people are going to die. But if you have Jesus Christ, you're going to live. Okay? Jesus made some claims when he was here on earth. He said things like, I'm God. I'm the only, I'm the only way to heaven. I'm the Savior of the world. A lot of people try to make Jesus a good teacher. But a good teacher would never say that, would he? See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they got, they got twisted off. This man's portraying to be God himself. Shame on him. Who does he think he is? He's saying that I'm the good shepherd and the shepherd lays down a life for his sheep. And he's saying that I and the Father are one. And he's saying all these slanderous things. He can't be the Messiah. Jesus was either who he said he was or he was a liar. There's one or two things that he is. And I'm going to tell you, I believe he's who he said he was. Right. One day he cleared the, the, the temple, the money changers. He cleared out the temple. They had turned the temple into something like a flea market, if you will. So he drove them all out. He said, what right do you have? They said to him, what right do you have to do this? They asked him, what right do you have to come in here turning over the tables and doing all these things? He said, because I'm God. I'm God in the flesh. They said, prove it. The religious leaders told him, prove it. He said, I will. He did. He said, I will. Because he said, three days after you kill me, I'm going to come back to life. And he claimed to be God, and his resurrection backs that up of what he claimed to be. They said, if you're going to, he said, I will destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They were thinking of the earthly temple. They were thinking of the temple where everybody met. They wasn't realizing that Jesus was speaking of the true temple of God, his body. He said, three days I'm going to raise it. John 14 and 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. Okay? That's a strong claim. He said, I'm the way. He didn't say, I'm one way, or I'm a good way, or I'm one of the ways. He said, I'm the only way. Yes. That's a strong claim. He said, there's no other way to heaven except for through the Son. See, many people believe that there's other ways to heaven. Let me tell you what, being a good person ain't going to get you to heaven. Them things are not going to get you to heaven. It's only through the blood that was shed on that cross is what gets you to heaven. That's right. And you have to find that. You have to find that. Have you ever heard this before? Some people say all roads lead to heaven. I've heard people say that. I've heard people tell me that over the years. Man, all roads lead to heaven. You can get to heaven many ways. That's pretty stupid, isn't it? It's pretty ignorant. That's like saying I can dial a phone, my, any phone number and get my house. 
isn't it? There's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. The second one is the resurrection means Jesus has the power he claimed to have. He has the power that he had claimed to have. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Because he is God, he can do everything God could do. He had the power. Why did he have the power? Because the Father gave it to him. He said, All authority has been given to me from my Father. He had the power. God gave it to him. Now let me tell you something. There were some things that Christ laid down to come to this earth. He didn't lay down that he was God in the flesh. But he couldn't be everywhere all at one time when he was on this earth. He couldn't be everywhere. He could only, if he was out on the boat with the disciples, he couldn't be in Jerusalem teaching. Okay? But he was still God in the flesh. And that power God gave to him. John 10 and 18. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. He's talking about his life. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. Nothing could keep him down. Just like the song said, there ain't no grave going to hold his body down. They could try. The Romans killed him. They put him in a tomb. They put a big stone in front of it and sealed it. And they posted a guard for 24 hours. They posted a guard. They were only trying to prevent the inevitable. Jesus said, they can't stop me. I can give my life away and I can take it up again. So on Sunday morning, Jesus proved them wrong. He proved them religious leaders wrong. When people tell me that you're a religious person, I stop them right there. I'm not a religious person. Because religion will send you to the pits of hell. I choose to follow Jesus Christ because Christ will send me to heaven. Because it was his blood that was shed on Calvary for me. Not religious leaders. It was Christ that shed his blood. I'm forgiven by grace through faith. And not of myself that is a gift of God, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. He says, by grace you have been saved. God has given us his grace. And the last one I want to share with you is the resurrection means Jesus did what he promised to do. Mark 10 and 34, Jesus says, And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. The cross was no surprise to Jesus. It was all a part of God's plan. We went to the promise uh, at Passover in Glen Rose Friday night. Rainy and I did. And I know it's a play. I know that it's just their characters and they're just they're putting on a play. But let me tell you what. When the part got to the point that Jesus come out of that tomb, I cried like a baby, I'm going to tell you. I ain't afraid to admit it. Because I seen what my God did for me. When that man that was portraying him walked out of that tomb, I seen what Christ did. I said, that was for me. That was for whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again. Well, how can you know that? History proves it. You can't deny it. History proves it. But not only does history prove it, it's in here. It's in my heart. So I ask you today, is it in your heart? Do you know that Christ died for you? Yeah, you've heard it your whole life. I've heard this story, preacher. I've heard this all my life. Just come on, get over and close so we can go home. Let me tell you. God is real. God's not dead. He isn't still hanging on the cross. He's not still in the tomb. He has risen from the dead. Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercession for you and me. When you pray, he hears you. There's no call waiting, Danny. There's no, let me put you on hold. There's no, do not disturb mode. When you call on Christ, he always answers. He's always there. Isn't that something? He's always there for us. So I want to ask you something today. 
Do you know him? Do you know of him? Or do you know who he is? There was a, most of my life, I'd say half of my life, I knew who Jesus was. I knew that he was God's son. I knew that he died on the cross. I believed in the resurrection. But I never made a confession that Jesus, you are the son of God. I never made a true confession. Even though I knew these things, I still would have never spent eternity in heaven because I never come to the Father through the Son. I never came and said, Jesus, I'm broken. I'm broken in, 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 in circumstances. I'm broken in life. I'm broken in the, the way that I'm living. And I need help. When I came to that point, and I hit my knees and I said, Father, forgive me. Jesus, save my life because I don't want to spend eternity separated from you. I don't want to spend eternity in a lake of fire with weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't want to spend eternity in hell. I want to spend eternity with you. I ask that you bow your heads this morning. Never head bowed, never eye closed, and I ain't going to be 45 minutes. I'm not going to tarry, and I'm not going to sit here for a long time, but I'm going to ask you this morning if you need Christ, if you're lost. And you say, you know what, I'm that guy, but I ain't willing to step forward. I'm not willing to come up. I'm not willing to su surrender in front of people. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. So I ask you today, if you're here and you know that you're in need of a Savior, raise your hand. If you know you need to be saved and you die today, you wouldn't spend eternity with Jesus. Raise your hand. I see your hand. Thank you. I'm not going to tell you a prayer to pray, a special prayer of what to pray, but I'm going to tell you this. Ask God to come in your life. Ask Jesus in. Tell God, tell Jesus Christ that your heart is open, that I want to accept you. I want you to come in. I want you to change me. I want you to cleanse me. I don't want to be the same person that I was. I want to be a new creation. I want to please you, Lord, because I want to spend eternity with you. I don't want to be separated from you. I want to follow you. I want you to be my God and I'll be your child. Accept him today. Because God is amazing. God can do anything. And he can change your life if you're willing to allow him. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the time that you've given us. Father, I thank you for the hand that went up. And I just pray, Father, that you would just uh, touch, this, touch this person, Father, and just minister to their heart. Throughout the, the, the days coming up, Lord, because life is so amazing. And you give us life every day. Father, we love you and praise you. And it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.